Soya, and I'm going to review Cynthia and her claim was genetic engineering and agriculture is beneficial to crop production. My opponent's secondary claims are genetic engineering will make the crops pest resistant, it will make crops herbicide tolerant, and it will make crops drought tolerant. So I am just going to refute two of the first, uh, two of the three. And the uh, refutation statement for her first claim is genetic engineering in agriculture is harmful to the future of crop production. Responded to her claim, genetic engineering will make the crops pest resistant. Pests will become res resistant to the genetic engineering, reducing effectiveness, effectiveness of pesticides. Pests genetically follow Darwin's survival of the fist theory and adapt to the genetic engineering variables that were used, causing the crops to be altered to no, origi to no original DNA strands present and were left with artificial mutation. A definition and statement was given by the EPA, which is the Environmental Protection Agency. Pest resistance is a genetic and significant decrease in, in the sens sensitivity of a pest population to, to a pesticide that is shown to reduce the field performance of pesticides. Many pesticides have gradually lost their effectiveness due to the development of resistance by the pests they once controlled. Basically, these plants will not be resistant anymore to the pests because they adapted to what was given to them genetically. The advocate also stated that it will lead to a better quality in crops. So one problem with that is how is that going to be measured in quality of crops? So according to Mijano and Gleich, Kuhn wrote a book on toxi toxicity and concluding that genetic engineering can cause unexpected mutation in an organi organism which can create new and higher levels of toxins in food. So basically this mo uh, modification of their genes will create toxins that could be harmful to humans. It's not proven, but it's also not proven that they're not harmful to us. In a 1999 study by Dr. Mark Lappi, published in the Journal of Medical Food, found that concentrations of beneficial phytoestrogen compounds thought to protect against heart disease and, cancer and lower cancer is in genetically modified soybeans than its traditional strands. So basically, the modified uh, beans had lesser um, phytoestrogen in their compounds, which made actually the food not as good as the original strap. My response to the secondary claim, genetic engineering will make crops herbicide tolerant. Gene transfer to non-target species. It's almost the same thing as the first one, only right here we're talking about un uh, unintentional or involuntary gene transfer from one um, crop to another. The advocate mentioned that farmers are use herbicides. A uh, bachelor in bio and master degree holder in biotechnology, Deborah Whitman, was also mentioned in my advocate, an advocate's speech, who, who previously supported the use of genetic engineering. And at the same time in her book, she also mentions a major concern with it. So this is kind of refuting the argument she had in the first place. Crop plants engineered for herbicide <coughs> tolerance and weeds will cooperate, <coughs> resulting in a transfer of herbicide-resistant genes from the crops into the weeds. Now we have created super weeds for, for whom are to be tolerant or resistant to herbicides as well. Other introduced genes may cross over into the non-modified crop plant next to GM crops. So that would be the problem that we face if one crop is being genetically modified that it might affect another crop which we didn't want to. And this can happen also by cross-pollinization. The book Genetically Modified Foods, Harmful or Helpful, was written by Deborah B. Whitman, which I just mentioned. Uh, also uh, introduces a lawsuit against the farmers by Monsanto because interbreeding forced the farmers to buy patent herbicide, herbicide from cheaper unknown sources. So now we're talking about a lawsuit because farmers are being dragged into a monopoly that they can't afford the herbicides which are unintentionally in their crops now. So the dependency on these uh, GMs or herbicides engineered crops also cause farmers to become yes, dependent on large pharmaceutical com companies. And I found a good analogy in the Washington Times and it says genetic engineering is like performing heart surgery with a shovel. Scientists do not yet understand living systems completely enough to perform DNA surgery without creating mutations which could be harmful to the environment and our health. They they, they are experimenting with very delicate yet powerful forces of nature without full knowledge of the repercussions. Therefore, I believe that genetic modification of genes in our crop is not a good idea. Thank you.
All right, labeling the claims is fine. Uh, I'm not quite sure why you're limiting yourself to the two points, but it, it, it basically sounds like you've got counterclaims that you're making on each of those points. I like, by the way, the uh, quote that you had that you finished up with because it does kind of put this uh, contextually into place so that we can assess what the general impact is going to be of these things. On the first point about uh, pest-resistant uh, strains, um, you kind of explain what the concept is, uh, what the theory would be, the likelihood, the probability, the risks, I think, are largely assumed, and I think you need to have a little bit more information here. I don't know if there are any examples that you could use to apply, uh, but that would be helpful if you had that. The one thing that you did have that I thought was good on the illustration of quality was the example that where they um, had an inadequate amount of the one uh, chemical, yeah, that, that produced this benefit that the, the genetically altered foods didn't have. I thought that that uh, gives us a little bit of contrast. On the second point, uh, the same sort of thing applies here. We've got a theory uh, that suggests what a potential risk is. Uh, we don't really have much quantification of what that risk is, except that we have that last quote that you're giving that says, you know, we're a little premature to be making these kinds of assessments. And so I think that gives you a nice comparative statement there. Uh, there was one, oh, I one thing I was going to say on that second point, when you get to that second point, you make the statement, it just sounds like a topic. It doesn't sound like a claim. And so you want to make sure that you make an inferential claim on that point and not just identify what the topic area is. All right. Thank you.